The Wisdom of Saint Isaac the Syrian 1. The ladder to the kingdom is hidden within you and within your soul. Dive down into yourself, away from sin, and there you will find the steps by which you can ascend. 2. Do not test out your mind on the grounds that you are examining what seductive and impure thoughts look like, imagining that as you do this, you will not be overcome by them. Even the wise have in this way been thrown into confusion and become infatuated. 3. Do not be inept in the requests you make to God, otherwise you will insult God through your ignorance. 4. When someone asks a human prince for a load of dung, not only will that person be despised as a result of his despicable request, but he also offer but he has also offered an insult to the prince by means of his stupid request. Exactly the same applies when someone asks for the things of the body in prayer. Five. If God is slow in answering your request, or if you ask but do not promptly receive anything, do not be upset, for you are not wiser than God. 6. Anything that is easily found is also easily lost, whereas what is found after much labor will be guarded with vigilance. 7. Thirst for Jesus, so that he may inebriate you with his love. 8. Without temptations, God's concern is not perceived, nor is freedom of speech with him acquired, nor is spiritual wisdom learnt, nor does the love of God become guarded in the soul. 9. Make sure you see to small things, lest otherwise you may push aside important ones. 10. A full stomach abhors examining spiritual matters, just as a prostitute dislikes talking about chastity. 11. Fire will not catch a light with wet wood, and fervor for God will not be kindled in a heart that loves ease. 12. When the evil one sees a person commence on some virtuous action with great fervor of faith, he has the habit of placing grievous temptations in that person's path in order to frighten them away from this course of action. 13. If you owe God a small coin over some matter, he is not going to accept from you a pearl in its place. 14. Divine care surrounds all human beings all the time, but it is only seen by those who have purified themselves from sins and who have God in mind at every moment. 15. If you believe firmly that God cares for you, then you do not need to worry about the body, nor need you be concerned about discovering ways to conduct your life. If, however, you doubt God's grace and want to look after yourself without God, then you are the most miserable person imaginable. 16. The person who benefits the poor finds that God takes care of him. 17. When you are ill, Say, blessed are those who discover the purpose set by God and the things that God brings upon us for our advantage. God is bringing this sickness for the sake of the soul's good health. 18. Before you fall ill, search out a doctor for yourself. Before difficulties come upon you, pray. Then, when the time of distress comes, you will discover prayer, and it will provide an answer for you. 19. The heart of the Lord is directed towards the humble to benefit them. The face of the Lord is set against the proud so as to humble them. Humility receives compassion continuously, whereas a hard heart and absence of faith continually meet with endless difficulties. 20. Do not feel loathing for any horrible illnesses of the sick, for you too are clothed in flesh. 21. Love sinners, but reject their deeds. Do not despise them because of their failings, lest you too find yourself tempted in the very same way. Remember that you too share in the stink of Adam, and that you too are clothed in his weakness. 22. 
The knowledge of God does not reside in a body that loves comforts. 23. Just as it is only after labor that a pregnant woman gives birth to the fruit that gives joy, so it is with the soul. Only after labors is knowledge of the mysteries of God given birth in it. 24. There are people who are continually making clever plans, but who never get down to beginning on them. 25. Commence every good action wholeheartedly. Do not approach it with two hearts. As you travel through life, do not let your heart doubt about the hope that God's grace provides. Otherwise, your toil will be in vain, and the labor of your work will weigh heavily upon you. Rather, have faith in your heart that God is compassionate, and to those who ask Him, He gives grace, not in accord with our work, but corresponding to the love and our souls and our faith in Him. As you believed, so it shall be to you. Matthew 9, 29. 26. Begin on every action that is for God's sake joyfully. 27. Just as the sun's rays are sometimes hidden from the earth by thick cloud, so for a while a person may be deprived of spiritual comfort and of grace's brightness. This is caused by the cloud of the passions. Then, all of a sudden, without that person being aware, it is all given back, just as the surface of the earth rejoices at the rays of the sun when they break through the clouds. So the words of prayer are able to break through to drive the thick cloud of the passions away from the soul. 28. Constant pondering on the Holy Scriptures will always fill the soul with incomprehensible wonder and joy in God. 29. Every prayer over which the body does not share the toil and over which the heart does not feel suffering you should consider to be stillborn. 30. Nothing, whether it be good or bad, happens to a person by blind chance. There is a provident God who steers the affairs of this world, and with each of us there is a guardian who does not miss anything, and whose watchfulness never relaxes or grows weak. 31. God is compassionate, and He loves to give, but He wants us to be the reason for His giving. Thus, His delight is when someone offers up to Him a wise prayer. 32. Satan is a name denoting the deviation of the human will from truth. It is not the designation of a natural being. 33. A farmer gets pleasure from bread that is produced as a result of the sweat of his labor. Until one first sweats, the true bread does not give satisfaction. 34. The suffering that grips the heart as a result of sinning against love is sharper than all other tortures. 35. Little endurance in face of small matters will hold back danger when serious ones come. For it is not possible to overcome great evils without a small victory over trifling matters. 36. The intellect will not be glorified with Jesus unless the body suffers for the sake of Jesus. 37. Courageousness of heart and scorning every danger come from one of two causes. Either they are true, either they are due to hardness of heart, or from an abundant faith in God. The former is accompanied by pride, while the latter by humility of heart. 38. It is a hard thing to be a slave serving the body. 39. Virtue does not consist in many different visible bodily activities, but in a heart that is wise in what it hopes for, and whose actions are accompanied by a right intention. 40. Faith is the gate to the mysteries. What the body's eyes are in relation to perceptible objects, so it is with faith in the case of the treasures that lie hidden to the eyes of the mind. 
41. When we have found love, we eat the heavenly bread and receive nourishment without labor or weariness. The heavenly bread is he who came down from heaven and gives life to the world. This is the food of angels. He who has found love consumes Christ at all times and becomes immortal from then on. 42. Blessed is the person who has eaten of the bread of love, which is Jesus. 43. As we cross the sea of the world, repentance should be our ship, reverential awe its pilot, while love is the divine harbor. 44. The person who has attained to knowledge of his own weakness has reached the summit of humility. 45. The mouth which is continuously giving thanks receives blessing from God. In the heart that always shows gratitude, grace abides. 46. A righteous person who is wise resembles God. He never disciplines anyone in order to take vengeance on a wrongdoing, but only so that the person may be set to right or that others may be deterred. 47. The mind that has discovered spiritual wisdom is like a person who has found in the midst of the sea a well-equipped boat. When he gets aboard it, it conveys him from the sea of this world and brings him to the isle of the world to come. 48. A cloud covers over the sun, and a much discourse covers over the soul that has begun to receive illumination in contemplative prayer. 49. Unripe fruits on trees are sour and disagreeable to the taste, and they are not suitable for eating until they acquire sweetness from the sun. Likewise, the first labors of repentance are bitter and very disagreeable, and they do not give the solitary any comfort until they acquire the sweetness that comes from contemplation. 50. A small cloud can cover over the sun's orb, but the sun that follows it shines all the brighter. A little dejection can cover over the soul, but the joy that follows it is all the more filled with delight. 51. Do not approach the mystery-filled words of the scriptures without prayer and a request for assistance from God. Say, Lord, grant me to become aware of the power in the words. Consider prayer to be the key to insights into truth in the scriptures. 52. A key to God's gifts is given to the heart by means of love of one's neighbor. 53. Ease and idleness affect the destruction of souls. 54. When the soul is inebriated with joy at the object of its hope and with exultation in God, then the body will no longer be aware of afflictions, even though it is brought very low. 55. Even if you do not possess a pure heart, at least let your speech be pure. 56. The more a person enters the struggle for the sake of God, the closer will his heart come to freedom of converse in the prayer. 57. We should not be upset at times when we are in darkness. This is especially important if we are not the cause of that darkness. For God's care is affecting this, for reasons of which he alone is aware. 58. At the times of darkness, more than anything else, kneeling is helpful. 59. Even if our feelings are cold and dark, we should persevere in kneeling. Even though our heart is dead at such times, and we cannot even pray, and do not know what to say since no words of prayer or supplication come to us, nevertheless, we should continue to remain prostrate on our faces, even though we are silent. 60. Just as a grain of sand will not balance in the scales against a great weight of gold, such too is the case with God's justice when it is weighed against his compassion. When compared with God's mind, the sins of all flesh are like a handful of sand thrown in the sea. 61. 
Just as an abundantly flowing fountain is not blocked by a handful of dust, so the Maker's mercy is not overcome by the wickedness of those whom He has created. 62. If you give something to someone in need, let us smile together with kind words and encouragement in their suffering. Precede your giving. 63. The day you open your mouth to denigrate somebody, consider yourself as dead to God and empty of all your labors. 64. Remember that Christ died for the wicked, as Scripture says, and not for the good. Consider it a much greater thing to suffer on behalf of evil people and to do good to sinners than to do this for the righteous. 65. Rebuke that starts out from envy is a poisoned arrow. 66. Be someone persecuted rather than become a persecutor. 67. Prefer to be treated unjustly yourself to treating someone else in an unjust way. 68. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep, for this is a sign of serenity. 69. Even if you are not a peacemaker, at least do not be a troublemaker. 70. If you have no means of stopping up the mouth of the person who denigrates his fellow human being, at least be on your guard yourself, lest you become his partner. 71. Undistracted prayer is prayer which produces the continual thought of God in the soul. 72. We should not be unduly upset if we slip up in some matter. This is only a cause for concern when we continue to do so. 73. We do not hate the sinner, for we are all guilty. If it is for the sake of God that you feel moved, then weep for that person. Why should you hate him? Or perhaps, if it is his sins you are hating, then pray for that person, so that you may imitate Christ, who never got angry with sinners, but prayed for them. 74. Be a herald of God's grace, seeing that he provides you with his grace, even though you are not worthy of it. 75. Knowledge is a step on the ladder up to faith. Once someone has reached faith, he does not need to use knowledge any longer. 76. Even government treasures of earthly powers do not refrain from taking a small coin from a beggar in order to increase their holdings. Out of small trickles, there grow up mighty streams of great rivers. 77. The way to God consists in a daily cross. No one can ascend to heaven in comfort. We know where the road of comfort leads to. 78. The desire of the Spirit for those in whom the Spirit dwells is not to let them grow accustomed to laziness or to invite them to a life of ease, but rather to one of labors and much affliction. Accordingly, the Spirit teaches them wakefulness, strengthens them in trials, and brings them to wisdom. 79. A time of trial is beneficial to everyone. The diligent are tried so that their wealth may increase. The lax so that they may be preserved from harm. Those spiritually asleep so that they may prepare themselves for watchfulness. Those who are far from God so that they approach Him. Those who are God's close associates so that they may come closer to Him in freedom of speech. 80. Love is sweeter than life. But even sweeter than honey and a honeycomb is an insight concerning God out of which love is born. 81. Our way of life in this world resembles a document that is still in draft form. Things can be added or taken out, and alterations can be made whenever one wants. But life in the world to come resembles the case of completed documents that have the king's seal already upon them and no addition or subtraction can be made. While we are still here, where changes can be made, let us take a look at ourselves, and while we still have control over the book of our life, and it is in our hands, 
Let us be eager to add to it by means of a good lifestyle, and delete from it the defects of our former lifestyle. 82. The aim of prayer is that we should acquire from it love of God, for in prayer are to be found all sorts of reasons for loving God. 83. Repentance is able to renew within us the grace which we have lost subsequent to baptism through our lax way of life. 84. You should be aware that not every book that gives instruction about the spiritual life is also useful for the purification of the conscience and the recollection of the thoughts. 85. A compassionate person is the physician of his own soul, for, as if with a strong wind, he chases away from his inner being a dark cloud. 86. Compassion is an excellent investment with God, for, according to the Gospel of Life, Blessed are the compassionate, since upon them there shall be compassionate. Or, another translation would be, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. 87. The following shall serve for you as a luminous sign of your soul's serenity. When, on examining yourself, you find yourself filled with compassion for all humanity, and your heart is smitten with pity and burns as if with fire on behalf of everyone without distinction. 88. Humility, even without ascetic labors, expiates many sins. Ascetic labors that are not accompanied by humility, however, are not only of no benefit, but they actually bring upon us much harm. 89. As salt is needed for all kinds of food, so humility is needed for all kinds of virtues. 90. Some people are robbed of their hope at the very gates of their home, that is to say, in old age. 91. Someone who shows compassion to the afflicted is like a person who has a good advocate in the law courts. 92. The more the sufferings of Christ abound in us, the greater will our consolation in Christ become. 93. If you fall into temptation, do not despair, for there is not a single merchant traveling by sea or land who does not suffer some loss, and there is not a single farmer who gathers in absolutely everything he has sown. 94. Without love for our neighbor, the mind is not able to become illumined by means of converse with God and divine love. 95. Humility is the robe of divinity, for when God the Word became incarnate, He put on humility and thereby communicated with us by means of our human body. Accordingly, everyone who is truly clothed in humility will resemble Him who descended from the height hiding the radiance of his greatness, and covering up his glory by means of his low estate. 96. A person receives illumination in accordance with the quality of his conduct before God. 97. Do not dispute over the truth with someone who does not know the truth, but from the person who is eager to know the truth, do not withhold words from him. 98. With a person who is unable to profit from spiritual knowledge, benefit him instead with your silence, rather than with words about such knowledge. 99. Do not consider a long time spent in worship before God to be wasted. 100. Those who just grab at knowledge are themselves grabbed by pride. The more they study, the more darkened they become. 101. Those who rush at knowledge, without working for it, are the people who grab at it. In other words, instead of the truth, they grab at semblance. 102. Whenever it is a time of battling with Satan and of darkness, one should spend extra time in prayer and in kneeling on the ground. 
103. In the case of thoughts, we have the authority to bridle them, that is, if we are extremely alert. But over the body's functioning, we do not have authority. Accordingly, anyone who says that he is without any passion when he fills his belly or is continuously involved in material spectacles has gone completely astray. 104. Impassibility does not consist in not being aware of the passions, but in not accepting the passions. 105. For someone to say to his brother, love God is very easy, but what is necessary is to know how to love him. 106. Ease blinds a person so that he does not gaze upon divine matters with wonder. Instead, it results in his examining them in an empty way. 107. What watering is to plants is exactly the same as continual silence for the growth of spiritual knowledge. 108. The person who loves labor is not someone who has no love for the comforts of the body, but someone who has no love for the concerns of the body. 109. Once the passions in the soul have been weakened and become silent through stillness, then a person can easily overcome the lust of the body. 110. The person who loves praise is not someone who, when praised, feels pleasure at the praise, but the person who devises ways of getting praise. 111. The person who is humble in mind is someone whose mind, even when he is justly praised, takes no pleasure in this. 112. The soul's refuge in times of trials and sorrow is our Lord's own faith. Acknowledgement of its weakness is a refuge for the soul in its ministry. 113. Weakness of body does not hinder the yearning of a sound conscience from fulfilling the good, provided the will does not get lazy. 114. Suffering for the sake of God is, is a medicine for the person who is smitten with illness. 115. Prayer that is not accompanied by a good way of life is an eagle whose wings have been plucked. 116. Virtue is not the child of good actions, but of good intention behind those actions. 117. Purity of prayer is silence from the chatter of thoughts about bodily matters. 118. You should not wait until you are cleansed of wandering thoughts before you desire to pray. If you only begin on prayer when you see that your mind has become perfect and raised above all recollection of the world, then you will never pray. 119. Someone who has actually tasted truth is not contentious for truth. Someone who is considered by people to be zealous for truth has not yet learnt what truth is really like. Once he has truly learnt it, he will cease from his zealousness on its behalf. 120. The entire purpose of our Lord's death was not to redeem us from sins, or for any other reason, but solely in order that the world might become aware of the love which God has for creation. Had all this astounding affair taken place solely for the purpose of the forgiveness of sin, it would have been sufficient to redeem us by some other means. 121. Variation of different prayers greatly helps a mind which is harassed by distraction. 122. Give yourself over to the labor of prayer and you will discover something which you cannot hear from another person. 123. Purity of soul is the stripping away of the cares of the flesh and of thoughts about the body. 124. An infantile mind is the one that entertains feeble conceptions about divine matters, having human ideas about them.
which are inappropriate to God's majesty. 125. Do not try to make your course run more quickly than the divine will wishes. Do not be in such a hurry that you try to get ahead of the providence which is guiding you. Not that I am saying that you should not be eager. 126. For someone to entrust himself to God means that, from that point onwards, he will no longer be devoured by anguish or fear over anything, nor will he again be tormented by the thought that he has no one to look after him. 127. Once someone has doubted God's care for him, he immediately falls into a myriad of anxieties. 128. Anyone who fears sin will not fear Satan, and all who yearn for God's gift will have no dread of temptations. Anyone who believes firmly that the will of the Creator controls his entire creation will not be perturbed by anything. 129. Knowledge of truth fills the heart with peace, establishing a person in joy and confidence. 130. There is no virtue which does not have continual struggle yoked to it. 131. With the love of God, a person will draw close to a perfect love of fellow human beings. No one has ever been able to draw close to this luminous love of humanity without first been held worthy of the wonderful and inebriating love of God. 132. Blessed is God who continuously uses corporal objects to draw us close in a mysterious way to a knowledge of his invisible being. 133. It is in proportion to the honor which someone shows in his person to God during the time of prayer, both with his body and with the mind, that the door of assistance will be opened for him, leading to the purifying of the impulses and to illumination in prayer. 134. God cannot be dishonored by anything, seeing that honor belongs to him by nature. But we, as a result of slovenly habits and various outward postures which lack reverence, have acquired an attitude of mind that shows contempt towards him. 135. Someone who shows a reverential posture during prayer, by stretching out his hands to heaven as he stands in modesty, or by falling on his face to the ground, will be accounted worthy of much grace from on high as a result of these lowly actions. 136. God accepts the paltry and insignificant things done for him with a good will for his sake, along with mighty and perfect actions. 137. The true vision of Jesus Christ our Lord consists in our realizing the meaning of his incarnation for our sakes and becoming inebriated with love of him as a result of the insights into the many wondrous elements contained in that vision. 138. May God make us worthy of a taste of his grace at all times, for by it we approach the wonder that surrounds him. 139. We should consider the labor of reading the scriptures to be something extremely elevated, whose importance cannot be exaggerated, for it serves as the gate by which the intellect enters into the divine mysteries and takes on strength for attaining to luminosity in prayer. 140. The reading of scripture is manifestly the fountainhead which gives birth to prayer. 141. Truly, no bad event has a worse repayment than in the case of a foolish mind which is not willing to rebuke and blame itself. 142. It is a matter for great dread to approach God in a lax way, under the guise of freedom of speech, or in the pretext of liberty. For maybe all of a sudden, some punishment will meet us at that point. 143. If a diver found a pearl in every oyster, then everyone would quickly become rich. 144. 
In love did God bring the world into existence. In love does He guide it during its temporal existence. In love is He going to bring it to that wondrous transformed state. And in love will the world be swallowed up in the great mystery of Him who has performed all these things. In love will the whole course of the governance of creation be finally comprised. 145. Just because the terms war, just because the terms wrath, anger, hatred, and the rest are used of the Creator in the Bible, we should not imagine that He actually does anything in anger, hatred, or zeal. Many figurative terms are used of God in the Scriptures, terms which are far removed from His true nature. 146. Among all God's actions, there is none which is not entirely a matter of mercy, love, and compassion. This constitutes the beginning and end of His dealings with us. 147. God's love is not a kind of love which has its origin in events which take place in time. 148. God has a single caring concern for those who have fallen just as much as for those who have not fallen. 149. It is God's wish that each day we should be renewed and start up again with a virtuous change of will and with a renewal of mind. 150. God's holy nature is so good and compassionate that it is always seeking to find some small means of setting us right. 151. God's mercifulness is far more extensive than we can conceive. 152. On the subject of God, it is right that only someone worthy of God because of his virtue should speak. 153. In your heart, act as a priest to God, offering up a pure sacrifice. To God be all glory, power, and honor. To the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen.